the same the same insights can also be exploited with respect to networks can also be exploited in other ways for example in the use of targeting specific people for interventions so for example most of you are probably familiar with the notion of herd immunity so if we have a population of a thousand people and uh, we want to make the population immune to a pathogen we don't have to immunize every single person. If we immunize 960 of them, it's as, as if we had immunized 100 of them. Because even if one or two of the non-immune people gets infected, there's no one for them to infect. They're surrounded by immunized people. So 96% is as good as 100%. Well, some other scientists have estimated what would happen if you took a 30% random sample of these 1,300 people and immunized them. Would you get any population level immunity? And the answer is no. But if you took this 30%, these 300 people, and had them nominate their friends and took the same number of vaccine doses and vaccinated the friends of the, the 300, the 300 friends, you get the same level of herd immunity as if you had vaccinated 96% of the population at a much greater efficiency with a fixed budget constraint. And similar ideas can be used, for instance, to target a distribution of things like bed nets in the developing world. If we could understand the structure of networks in, in villages, we could target to whom to uh, give the interventions to foster these kind of spread. Or frankly, for advertising with all kinds of products. If we could understand how to target, it could affect the efficiency of what we're trying to achieve. And in fact, we can use data from all kinds of sources nowadays. This is a map of 8 million phone users in a European country. Every dot's a person and every line represents a volume of calls between the people. And we can use such data that's being passively obtained to map these whole countries and, and understand who is located where within the network without actually having to query them at all. We can get this kind of a structural insight. And other sources of information, as you're no doubt aware, are available about uh, such information from email interactions, online interactions, social, online social networks, and so forth. And in fact, we are in the era of what I would call massive passive data collection efforts. There are all kinds of ways we can use massively collected data to create sensor networks, to follow the population, understand what's happening in the population, and intervene in the population for the better. Because these new technologies tell us not just who is talking to whom, but where everyone is, and what they're thinking based on what they're uploading on the internet, and what they're buying based on their purchases. And all this administrative data can be pulled together and processed to understand human behavior in a way we never could before. Think about the 